are over 43 million workers that are exposed to hazardous chemicals in the workplace. OSHA statistics show about 15% of all workplace injuries and fatalities relate to chemical exposure. Physical, health, fire, and other hazards can occur on a daily basis. With over 500,000 different chemicals throughout the world, OSHA has modified the Hazard Communication Standard HCS, by adopting provisions of the Globally Harmonized System GHS, to assist workers with the information they need to recognize and avoid hazardous chemicals. Upon completion of this training module, you will be able to State the purpose of the HAZCOM standard Recognize who is covered by the HAZCOM standard State the four basic parts of the HAZCOM standard State the purpose of the Globally Harmonized System GHS. Identify physical and health hazards of chemicals Recognize what should be included in the written hazard communication program Recognize the information contained in a safety data sheet SDS and how it is used and maintained in the workplace. Recognize the information contained on product labels and how it is used and maintained in the workplace. List the elements of the HAZCOM standard training program. All employees have the right to know the potential hazards the chemicals in the work area pose. Before working with or using chemicals, each employee should understand the health and physical hazards of the materials. Proper handling and storage of chemicals can begin to reduce the risk of chemical incidents in the workplace. Some chemicals can cause different serious health effects like cancer, nervous system damage, lung damage, liver damage, kidney damage, and reproductive system effects. OSHA, or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, is a government agency that was founded in 1970 to ensure safe and healthy working conditions for employees. The HAZCOM standard achieves its purpose by an integrated four-pronged system. First. Chemical manufacturers and importers must review available scientific evidence concerning the physical and health hazards of the chemicals they produce or import and make an assessment if they are hazardous. Second, the employer must have a written hazard communication program in the workplace and there must be someone responsible for keeping it up to date. Employees must familiarize themselves with the program and understand how it is implemented in the facility. This written HAZCOM program lists all of the hazardous materials at the worksite. It explains how the employer informs employees about new and existing hazards. It also notes the location of SDSs and who is responsible for updating them. Finally, it includes information about safe handling and recommended personal protective equipment PPE. Third, for every chemical found to be hazardous, the chemical manufacturer or importer must develop comprehensive safety data sheets SDS, and labels for containers and send both with the chemicals to users. The employer must maintain a current hazardous chemical inventory form, which will be located with the SDS sheets. It is a best practice to have SDS sheets for all chemicals located and used in the facility. Fourth, all employers must provide information and training to employees about the hazardous chemicals in their workplace. Proper training will ensure that all employees will know how to read and use SDSs, will know what protection is required to work safely with the chemicals in the workplace, and will be able to determine what actions to take if an emergency occurs. What is GHS? GHS is an international approach to hazard communication, providing generally accepted criteria for classification of chemical hazards and a standardized approach to label elements and safety data sheets. This system provides classification criteria for health, physical, and environmental hazards of chemicals. It also includes standardized label elements that are assigned to these hazard classifications and categories and provide the appropriate signal words, pictograms, and hazard and precautionary statements to convey the hazards to users. GHS also provides a standardized 16-section safety data sheet format for all chemical products. Who is covered? Chemical producers, manufacturers, and importers will need to review the hazard information for all their chemicals produced or imported, classify them using the new criteria, and update their labels and SDSs accordingly for distribution and end users. Employers will need to use these new labels and SDSs and provide updated training for all employees. Everyone that was covered previously by the OSHA HAZCOM standard will continue to be covered by this revised program. Hazardous Materials Many people characterize a hazardous chemical as one that could burn your skin, is flammable, could cause long-term health effects, cancer-causing, corrosive, toxic, or can damage specific body organs, which is true. 
However, OSHA also includes products that may cause minor irritation, like shampoos and detergents, which may cause temporary redness or itching of the skin or watery eyes as hazardous. Chemical hazard classifications. Physical hazards, such as flammability or explosion, which can potentially cause serious accidents and injuries. Health hazards can affect a person's health either in the short term or in the long term. Environmental hazards can affect aquatic life in the short term or in the long term. GHS will not address environmental hazards since they are regulated by other agencies. An essential part of a hazard communication program is labeling. This is a quick, easy way for employees to see the most important information about the product they are working with. The product's name, any hazard warnings, directions for use, first aid, and the manufacturer's name and address. All Betco brand labels also include helpful telephone numbers for questions and comments from users. Labeling requirements include the following. The GHS label format specifies for each hazard classification and for each category what signal word, pictogram, hazard statements, and precautionary statements should be used. This information must be located on the label. The actual label format or layout is not specified in the GHS program. Product identifier name or number used for a hazardous product on a label or in the SDS. Signal word will be used to emphasize hazards and indicate the relative level of severity of the hazard assigned to a GHS hazard classification and category. Only one signal word should be used on a label. Danger, severe, or warning, less severe. Some lower level hazard categories do not use signal words. Hazard statement a specific statement assigned to a hazard classification and category that describes the nature of the hazards of a chemical, including the degree of hazard. Appropriate statements for each GHS hazard of the product are included on each label. There are two hazard classifications, physical and health hazards. Each of these classifications has specific categories. Pictograms are symbols, plus other graphic elements, that are intended to convey specific information about the hazards of a chemical. They are composed of a white background and red borders with the appropriate GHS symbol. Precautionary Statement A phrase that describes the recommended measures to be taken to minimize or prevent adverse effects resulting from exposure to a hazardous chemical. The precautionary statements have been linked to each GHS hazard statement and type of hazard. The four types of precautionary statements are Prevention Response in cases of accidental spillage or exposure, storage, and disposal. Example a precautionary statement of eye irritant will also state use protective eyewear. Supplemental information. Information on the container of a hazardous product that is not required or specified under the GHS. Supplemental information may be used to provide further details that does not contradict or cast doubt on the validity of the standardized hazard information. Example, the label could include the color, fragrance, or VOC level of the product. OSHA is maintaining the approach used in the previous HCS that allows employers to use workplace-specific labeling systems, such as secondary labeled spray bottles, as long as the employer provides the required GHS information. Product containers of chemicals that have been poured from one container to another also require the same specific labeling. The OSHA standard states that it is not necessary to label a container that you have poured from one container to another if the entire contents will be used or disposed of during a standard shift, such as a mop bucket or a spray bottle. Employers may choose to label workplace containers either with the same label that would be on shipped containers or with label alternatives that meet the requirements for the standard. Betco provides self-stick labels for secondary labeling purposes. Employers should provide the containers, self-stick labels, or provide information on appropriate labeling. In addition to these OSHA labeling requirements, an employer may choose to add additional information, such as the NFPA or HMIS ratings on container labels. Never use or handle an unlabeled container. If you find a container that is not labeled, notify your supervisor immediately. Pictograms are symbols, plus other graphic elements, that are intended to convey specific information about the hazards of a chemical. Pictograms will consist of a symbol on a white background framed within a red border, which represents a distinct hazard. The pictogram on the label is determined by the chemical hazard classification. These are the required pictograms for use on chemical labels. The Hazard Communication Standard, or HCS, requires chemical manufacturers, distributors, or importers to provide safety data sheets, or SDSs, formerly known as Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDSs, to communicate the hazards of hazardous chemical products. 
SDSs must be provided with the first shipment and anytime the information changes. They must be obtained for all hazardous chemicals in the workplace before they are used. It is a best practice to have SDSs for all chemicals used at the facility. SDSs will have most of the information found on the label, plus more specific information about the chemical organized into 16 mandatory sections, which are in line with the format established by the American National Standards Institute, ANSI. It will provide comprehensive information about the chemical product that allows employers and workers to obtain concise, relevant, and accurate information that can be put in perspective with regard to the hazards, uses, and risk management of the chemical product in the workplace. Sections 12 through 15 are not mandatory, and OSHA will not be policing the content of these sections because they are outside the scope of its jurisdiction. Examples Ecological information and disposal considerations governed by EPA, transport information, which is governed by DOT, and other regulatory agencies. SDS requirements Employers can provide SDSs in additional languages, but English is required. SDSs must include information regarding the specific identity of the chemical and common names for it. OSHA's Hazard Communication Standard requires SDSs for the chemicals used in the workplace to be readily accessible to employees. Acceptable methods, paper copies, online access, etc. It is the employee's responsibility to know exactly where SDSs are kept in the workplace and how to read them. Section 1. Identification includes product identifier, manufacturer or distributor name, address, phone number, emergency phone number, recommended uses, and restrictions for use. Section 2. Hazard identification identifies the hazards of the chemical presented on the SDS and the appropriate warning information associated with those hazards. Example. This would be the hazard statement, signal word, pictogram, and precautionary statement from the label. Section 3. Composition information includes chemical ingredients contained in the product with appropriate chemical names and chemical abstract service numbers, CAS, trade secret claims. This is only for the hazardous ingredients. Section 4. First aid measures includes important symptoms, effects, acute, delayed, immediate, and required treatment for the initial care given by untrained responders to a person that has been exposed to the chemical. Section 5. Firefighting measures that list suitable extinguishing techniques, equipment, and chemical hazards from a fire of this chemical. Example, what firefighters should wear while fighting the fire. Section 6. Accidental release measures that list emergency procedures, protective equipment, proper methods of containment and cleanup of spills to minimize exposure to people, properties, or the environment. Example, how to neutralize the chemical and proper disposal methods. Section 7. List precautions for safe handling and storage, including incompatibilities with other chemicals. Example, exhaust fans, temperature limits. Section 8. Exposure controls personal protection. List OSHA's permissible exposure limits, PELs, threshold limit values, TLVs, appropriate engineering controls, exhaust fans, and personal protective equipment, PPE, to minimize workers' risks. Example, eye, face, skin, or respiratory protection. Section 9. Physical and chemical properties that list the chemical's characteristics, like pH, color, fragrance, flashpoint, and others. Section 10. Stability and reactivity that list chemical stability and possibility of hazardous reactions. This will identify any materials that are not stable with other chemicals. Normally, this will be stable for typical cleaning products. Example. Never mix ammonia and bleach. Section 11. Toxicological information includes routes of exposure, related symptoms, acute and chronic effects, and the numerical measures of toxicity. Example, inhalation, ingestion, skin, and eye contact. Section 12. Ecological information. EPA concerns. Information to evaluate the impact if the chemical were released into the environment. Section 13. Disposal considerations. EPA concerns. Proper disposal practices, recycling or reclamation of the chemical or its container, and safe handling practices. Section 14. Transport information, DOT concerns. Shipping and transporting of hazardous chemicals by road, air, rail, or sea. Section 15. Regulatory information. Other federal, state, or local regulations that are not indicated anywhere else on the SDS. Section 16. Other information includes the date of preparation or last revision 
or other labeling information, like HMIS or NFPA labeling systems. Note, since other agencies regulate this information, OSHA will not be enforcing sections 12 through 15. It is imperative that employees know where the SDSs are located at the job site. SDSs can often be found in a binder at a HASCOM station within the workplace. Many facilities are also putting SDS information on computers. The employer must inform all employees the location of this information. Manufacturers have various ways to get an SDS to users, no matter when it may be needed. Safety data sheets for Betco products can be retrieved at our website, www.betco.com. Employees must take the time to read about the products used while doing their jobs. Think about what the sheet says and how you are using the product. And remember, if working with a new chemical, read the SDS and label and consult with a supervisor before using the product. Just having labels and SDSs around would be ineffective if the employee doesn't know how to interpret them or where to find them. Proper training will ensure that employees will know how to read and use safety data sheets, will know what protection is required to work safely with the chemicals in the workplace, and will be able to determine what actions to take if an emergency occurs. OSHA requires employers to present information in a manner and language that their employees can understand. If employers customarily need to communicate work instructions or other workplace information to employees in a language other than English, they will also need to provide safety and health training to employees in the same manner. Similarly, if the employee's vocabulary is limited, the training must account for that limitation. By the same token, if employees are not literate, telling them to read training materials will not satisfy the employer's training obligation. Employees must be trained on the hazard communication program before being assigned to work with a hazardous chemical they could be exposed to, whenever the hazard changes, whenever a new hazard is introduced into their work area. Employers must tell employees about the requirements of the hazard communication standard, where hazardous chemicals are present in the workplace, what the written program, hazardous chemical inventory, and SDSs are and where to find them. The training employees receive must include an explanation of the HASCOM program, including information on labels, SDSs, and how to obtain and use available hazard information, the physical and health hazards of chemicals in the employee's work areas, what employees can do to protect themselves from these hazards. For example, engineering controls, work practices, and the use of personal protective equipment, PPE. How to detect the presence or release of a hazardous chemical. For example, by using monitoring devices, observation, or smell. The employee must check with the supervisor if they are not sure about any of these items. Always refer to facility special instructions when there is a chemical emergency. Typical types of chemical emergencies you may encounter. Injury, illness. Notify their supervisor immediately. If known, report what hazardous material they were exposed to and ensure the appropriate treatment is followed. Chemical exposure. Skin. Flush with tempered water for a minimum of 15 minutes. If no visible burns, remove all jewelry and soap the area. Seek medical attention if the reaction occurs or if there is any question about possible problems. Body. Remove all contaminated clothing. Locate the nearest emergency shower and soak for a minimum of 15 minutes and seek medical attention. Eyes. Remove contact lenses, irrigate eyes with tempered water for a minimum of 15 minutes, and seek medical attention. Smoke fume exposure. Do not enter the area. There could be potentially dangerous fumes. Remove person to fresh air. If the employee is down, contact emergency personnel and let them enter the area. Seek medical attention as soon as possible after exposure. Spills. If a hazardous chemical spills or if there is a leak, Find the nearest spill cart and clean up the spill or leak. Remember these best practices when dealing with chemicals. Employees have the right to know about the chemical hazards within the workplace. There are three important parts to hazard communication program. Labeling, SDSs, and worker training. Read and understand the company's HASCOM program. All chemical containers must be properly labeled. This includes the original manufacturer's packaging, as well as secondary packaging such as spray bottles. Be sure to read the label and SDS before starting any procedure. Know where the SDSs are located in the facility, as well as how to read and understand each SDS for the products you come in contact with, especially new ones. Always wear recommended personal protective equipment, PPE, such as gloves and goggles. Proper PPE items will be listed on the product's label and or safety data sheet. If possible, use a chemical management system, 
such as Betco's FastDraw system, which is an effective way to reduce chemical exposure to employees and the environment and ensure accurate product dilution for added economy. Remember, all employees have the right to safe and healthy working conditions and have the right to know and understand about any and all of the hazardous materials in the workplace. Be proud that you and your employer have taken the time to learn more about OSHA HASCOM and use your knowledge to make a difference in creating a safer work environment. The information presented here provides an overview of the requirements of the Federal OSHA GHS HASCOM standard. Please consult your regional OSHA office or state office for more specific information applicable to your state. For more information, please visit www.betco.com or call 888-GO-BETCO. Thank you.